I'm here at the ASUS uh, Republic of Gamer Play It Cool event at the Legacy Esports Gaming House and I'm here with the hosts today. Um, so guys, how are you today and how are you, you liking the event so far? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. I think we've all had a pretty good time so far eating some food and that sort of thing so just waiting for things to get underway later today. What are you m most excited about seeing with all the fans coming through here? Are you expecting to see a lot of the boys helping out more of the public players or are you expecting them to just romp all over them? Well, chatting to them yesterday, they, they seem pretty keen to actually do pretty well. So okay. uh, we'll see how they go. I think I think they might try to include the players a little bit, but um, maybe, maybe they'll go hard. We'll see. You think they'll hold their cards till the last match and then let it all loose? Maybe, yeah. They'll probably they'll probably give uh, the the public a little bit more of a, a fun time early on, and then maybe if they start to lose, they need to to get their uh, their reputation back. They'll go hard later on. And so let's talk about uh, esports in the Oceanic region. Um, it's quite obviously coming up in a big way. Um, and uh, how are you guys finding it? And how are you finding the sort of transition from sort of teams trying to make it and suddenly being put in the spotlight by companies like Riot and Asus. So I've been around the scene a long time. Um, I was a pro player back in 2012 before Riot had a server here, you know, before there was a Riot Oceania and the tournaments were definitely like basically around um, gaming cafes and the prize pool was mouse pads and things like that. So four years later effectively we've come to the point where Riot Oceania is super involved in esports and you know, it's the second season of the OPL. Um, and things like this event, you know, this Play It With Cool event with Legacy is a symbol of where we're at. We've got a very well-established gaming house, great premises. Um, the NBN has got to the point where the internet's there so the players can finally... And that's the big thing about Oceania Esports is that a lot of these guys are great personalities, but the internet's been that bottleneck where no one could be a big streamer like, of course, a lot of the American European guys are. Now we've got streaming, now we've got Riot invested. The growth is here for all to see, and then just having an event like this where fans are gonna come, where the media's here, it's a symbol of what Oceania Esports is to some degree, but also what it can become. And that's why it's exciting. With streaming the way it is now, and finally, as you said, NBN, um, Australia does have a lot of rising Twitch streaming stars. Now, Jenna. <laughs> um, tell us a bit about what you're doing and um, yeah, how Twitch is, has been for you? Well, I wouldn't say that I have the greatest internet, but uh, with what I've got, um, I find that streaming is getting a little bit better because I used to have really, really bad internet, but then I've upgraded to cable. And then with the uprising of NBN and, you know, um, the, the rollout of NBN, I think there's a lot of really good quality streamers out there that just need access to really good internet, yeah, to show their personality. And certainly, you know, with the NBN um, rollout, it's just, you know, getting really much better yeah and with my stream I only started streaming say at the end of last year and I started doing you know League, Hearthstone and Diablo and it's just you know growing. Obviously the boys here are trying to make their way to the top of Oceania and um, they were saying that an Oceanic team actually got second place in one of the last um, tournaments for League of Legends. How do you see us progressing in terms of the international stage now that we have uh, internet that allows us to play against international teams. Obviously, Korea is still the biggest place um, in terms of esports popularity, but in terms of us being able to compete, do you think we are on a boom? Yeah, look, it's getting there. Um, there's still a long way to go because having traveled internationally, um, seeing how esports works overseas, um, and then coming back here, you know, you do see a lot of the things that we are lacking, but Within the last year, obviously, we've been making great leaps and bounds and that sort of thing, and all the sort of the stuff that Riot's doing with the OPL and that sort of thing, giving the teams opportunities to play a lot more often and against a higher level of competition. We are starting to see the, the competition get a lot closer and a lot of the teams competing against each other rather than just having that one team that is always the best. So I would say, yes, the competition is getting better for us and um, we're more likely to compete overseas internationally and be able to place better. But uh, I would say there's still a little bit of a, a way to go. Just on the same point, uh, you, you spoke about internet as a bottleneck and I don't think that's actually the thing because with the Oceanic server coming through, the ping is pretty fine if you're in, even in Western Australia, it's under 100, so it's very playable. The bigger issue is infrastructure and it's things like this gaming house where these players can come together, where their main focus is going to be practicing scrim, living a healthy lifestyle, both mental 
and physical both uh, very intertwined this is the start where you can actually kind of devote yourself to like the thing about Korea is that because it's had that history of esports for over 10 years things like gaming houses have kind of been second nature you know where the players can don't have to think about income the players don't have to think about any responsibilities even just eating or like cleaning and things like that apart from very minimal obvious things they just focused on the game and focused on getting better and that's why having now two gaming houses uh, between the Hellions gaming house and of course Legacy as well it's very good for them to have the chance to have regular scrim partners and it's all about the level of practice because the thing that people kind of misunderstand about esports is that although we have good internet playing against say a Korean team it's too ping intensive a game. You can't do that. You can't practice against the best in the world. So all the Oceanic teams have is other Oceanic teams. They're unique in that. For example, South American teams can play against North American teams. Korean teams can play against Chinese teams. These regions help each other get better. All Oceanic teams have are other Oceanic teams. That's why it's important that we now have two teams with gaming houses. We have Riot that's also propping up the scene and making the OPL something competitive. And if more teams take this kind of leap, it just means the player's going to get more scrims, the player's going to get more practice, and the player's going to get better because only people that can make the oceanic scene better uniquely in the world is the oceanic scene. So it's good to see steps forward like this. Um, and also organizations require funding and like, sponsorships and investment. So I think for oceanic to step up to the game, we need a lot more investment. And I see that uh, ESL has been doing a lot to try and get a uh, foothold in the oceanic region in Australia as well. Um, what sort of impact do you think would have having a international tournament in Australia for specific games have on helping the scene get better, um, especially with teams in say Counter-Strike like Virtus Pro coming to Australia and playing the, the Australian Counter-Strike teams? Do you think it would be great for that to happen on a more regular basis to help improve Oceania's chances against uh, I guess the world. Yeah, actually it's a really good opportunity for all of our Oceanic teams to actually be able to play against these international teams like what Papa Smithy was talking about before. They don't often get that opportunity and really it's only a select few that are able to go overseas and I guess get that sort of experience. So when we do get these international teams coming over to us, um, then that gives a much broader audience in terms of our players being able to get that experience. So it's really good for them. And I definitely think that, yeah, if we do get more of those sorts of events, then it would be great for our scene as a whole, not just in League of Legends, but also Counter-Strike and whatever other game perhaps uh, teams come over for. Is there anything else that you guys would like to add, I guess, just on a general level? of? I think one of the big problems the Oceanic scene has compared to other scenes is that we're kind of in a situation where the expectations of the players have always been very high because the expectations are established by the North American LCS and the European LCS in terms of League of Legends, where those players have said those brands, everything there's been going for years, and they look at the OPL and it's obviously small. It's not played um, in a LAN setting, so you don't have the players in the studio. It's played online. But the scene here is small and the scene is growing, and this is the symbol of what the scene can be is things like this gaming house, the fact that we're going to have lots of fans coming here to see the players. But this scene is growing at a slower but steadier rate towards and aspiring towards things like NA and EU. It's about having those realistic expectations because you might ex compare, for example, the Australian scene to the Brazilian scene. You might be like, okay, these are both of these international wildcard regions. Why do we have less viewers than Brazil and things like that? But you have to remember the unique thing about the Australian scene is that there is English language, like local English language broadcast of bigger leagues. Whereas with the Brazilian scene, it's unique that of course it's a Spanish broadcast, it's their local language, etc. Or Portuguese broadcast, regardless. Um, whereas there's lots of options if you're in Australia. You can either watch um, the Korean league in English at around the same time zone. You can watch EU and NA at different times of the day. So there's a lot of competition for our viewers. So it's all about growing organically and then the viewers will come and that's it's kind of a bittersweet thing to think about but the Australian scene will get there it's just going to take time it's on a different track to some of the other English language broadcasts well thank you very much guys um the event here has been a great eye-opener to how it is spreading and how uh Riot, Asus and other sponsors are able to help players be able to focus purely on playing and uh yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the event and enjoy broadcasting with the uh, the guests coming through.